Okay, so um, finally time, you're gonna see the build of the kiln. Now I built the kiln about six, seven months ago, I think, and I was testing it before I sort of showed anyone, make sure it's working. Um, I've got a full cut list and plans. If you've got any questions about how much it costs, what I use, go to my Etsy site. The full cut list is there if you really wanna make one of these. The main thing behind this kiln for me um, is that it's movable by my forklift truck. So it's actually built in there and moved. So I need to be able to move it because I haven't got a permanent home for it. Um, the other thing was, is just to have it small enough so it's economical to run. You'll see in this build, I'm using at the end just two tube heaters and a basic domestic uh, dehumidifier. And it works absolutely fine with that. So it can be quite cost effective to run. I've since gone up to a system that I've come up with myself, which has got some Wi-Fi switches. Uh, it's automated as well. And I've got a brand new dryer, which I'll tell you about on the next couple of videos. Um, I've been also, you might notice, I've been strapping my wood down. It works really well. I do this for two reasons. It does help a little bit with cupping if you're trying to dry it, but it also means we can move it in and out on the forklift truck if we're sharing the kiln space. So I hope you enjoy. This was the first video. This shows you from the beginning. The next video will be more up to date about how I've been using it. So we've got the foam here, which is going under and between there, giving us our seal. So we won't have to use too much, if any, mastic on the inside. 
this is really uh, watertight and airtight. Last one is five.
slide it on to get that material trapped. Will, Bill, go back off a minute. So we can sort of slide it on a bit so it bends that cloth round. Oh yeah. Because yours is for some reason not. That's it, perfect. I'm not 100% sure what dryer I'm going to use, so I've just made this real quick extension for the back um, to house the dryer I've got at the moment, and we'll see whether I'm going to change the dehumidifier. This real quick thing, just putting this together. Pretty flimsy until you put the ply on, but when you ply it up, it's rigid. Okay, so this thing's pretty Heath Robinson in its execution. What I've done here is all my off cups have gone in this void. This is where the motor's gonna be and dehumidifier and the heater. So I thought I'd just get rid of all my scraps. It's a really tight fit up there. Um, then I'm gonna screw that in. And this is removable. Should I change my mind how I'm, what size thing I'm gonna use, if I wanna extend it, make it smaller, whatever. Uh, and it'll have a door on the back so I can access the uh, unit if it fails or if I need to check something without having to get all the timber out if it's in the middle of drying.
Okay, so this is gonna be kind of the engine room where the electrics goes. And I've literally got a lift on back, which just pushes in tight. Just uses a tight fit on there. And then this is kind of the seal. So that was a bit of an afterthought. I'm not sure how I would have done it differently if I'd have thought it originally. It works fine, keeps it off the floor um, and gives me the full, if you look inside here, get full uh, 1.2, that's a complete board, by just under 4.8, two board lengths. I'm gonna have my fans mounted up there, three or four of them, uh, two tube heaters, one each side on the back and then whatever dehumidifier or kiln system I have will be in the back. And then a little pipe goes out there, just drilled 80 um, mil hole, just a little bit of pipe, which will stuff. So the um, main, main electric is gonna come, come out here. This overhang is gonna be where my electric box goes with my uh, temperature gauges, moisture gauge, uh, meter, and uh, I'm probably gonna get the little, uh, at some point, the prongs for a wood moisture meter, so I can stick it into one of the planks, just get a very rough idea what's going on, instead of keep opening it, save on the energy. So that's all pretty good. The whole thing's gonna be lifted up and put out here for now on this, this slab, so at least I know it's level, I'm gonna move all that. Uh, and that's where it's gonna be from now on, for now. Ultimately, I don't know if, if I'm gonna be moving around, but that's the back of it anyway. So I've not finished, as in the doors themselves, I just pushed in, there's no seal, but last night I did a test, and I was running this little, uh, I think it's 40 watt, and that one there is, I think it's 60, might be 80. So it's about 100 watt plus the actual dehumidifier. That is the water it removed. And when we first opened it, it was 31 in there and the moisture content was 28. So this thing's super efficient. Hey, that's it for this video. Um, it was a little bit long, I know, and the video was done a while ago, but I really wanted to test it and see how good it was before I kind of showed my idea of how to build a kiln. The key to mine, as I showed in the video, this is a torsion box. Not only does it help keep the wood flat, but I can pick it up and move stuff around. Um, it is really, really efficient. If you heat it up, it takes days to cool down. Um, mainly, I think, down to this stuff, which is like a packing foam that I use. You can buy on Amazon. And then the whole kiln, every part of it, has got a 50 mil kind of ecotherm or Celotex uh, foil back. And it really, really is efficient. I actually now run the kiln on a timer on off um, during the day rather than on constantly. And I'm gonna go much more in depth into that, how I use the kiln, what I use it for. I'm not drying fresh, I'm not a saw yard, so you know, a saw, a saw mill, so I don't actually split the logs and stick them in here to dry them to sell them. It's really my stock and to get things moisture content right for building furniture, depending where it's going, what sort of house or business it's going into, whether it's got resin, whether it's big wide slabs. The key is getting that moisture right. So I'll do some more videos following up on the moisture meter I use, how I use it, I've already touched on it once. I'll go much more in depth on that on the next video and how I use this kiln in combination with those two things to get the furniture right and to hopefully keep things dead flat. Um, really really helps if you uh, if you like the video please hit the like button um, it would really help and if you enjoy this channel please subscribe thanks so much to all my supporters and my patrons i really really appreciate it hope you're all staying safe during this time i'll see you on the next one